Thanks for the introduction. Um, I'm going to talk today about the Spark Open Source Project, some of the things uh, going on with that uh, in, in terms of how companies are using it, and also where we think the edge in big data will be, which motivates what we're working on in Spark. So let me start uh, with just a bit of background why, on why do we have the big data problem today. And the answer for that is actually very simple. It's that it's become dramatically cheaper to store data. So in the past 10 years, the cost to store large volumes of data has fallen by a factor close to 20. It depends, you know, depends exactly how you count. And it's due to both increasing storage density of things like hard disks, but also to a revolution in software. Um, in the sort of motivated by web companies, uh, there's been a new architecture for large-scale data storage that starts to use commodity clusters, and software like Hadoop has made it much cheaper to store large data sets than previous traditional approaches. And today, this kind of software, this kind of commodity cluster architecture is broadly available from multiple vendors, and it's becoming the standard for storing large data sets. So if we take this into account and we see that big data storage is becoming commoditized, how will organizations gain an edge in big data? Uh, the answer is very simple. Uh, what will matter next is what you can do with the data. Just storing large amounts of data, which was a competitive advantage for some organizations at first, will no longer be enough. So two things will affect what you can do with the data. They are the speed and sophistication. Speed means how quickly you can go from data to decisions or to actions. It's the whole end-to-end -end process from the point that the data comes in to the point that someone maybe writes a computation or a query to run on it to the point where you can take a business decision based on it. Sophistication means what quality of algorithms can you run on the data. Uh, if, you know, there, there are many examples of data sets where anyone can, for instance, call the web or collect these public data sets, but only a few companies, such as Google, have come up with and run the sophisticated algorithms to gain the most value out of it. And the interesting thing about these two factors is, is unlike just large-scale storage, achieving the best speed and the best sophistication has usually required separate non-commodity tools that don't run on these commodity clusters, are often proprietary and quite expensive. So Apache Spark is a compute engine for Hadoop data. It runs in Hadoop clusters, and it's designed to address this problem. Spark is fast. It can be as much as 100 times faster than MapReduce in real user workloads. As an example here, we compare the performance of Apache Hive running on MapReduce with Hive running on Spark on disk. And you, know, you get a factor of five speed up there. And then if you run Spark in memory, which is uh, something that's unique to the Spark platform, you get another factor of 18 speed up uh, over that. So you can use the same commodity hardware you have to run at speeds that previously were only attainable with the very special and expensive software you'd have to purchase. Spark supports sophisticated algorithms. Uh, it's been designed from the beginning to support um, machine learning and graph algorithms, uh, and it has a growing set of packages on top of it, including SQL, real-time stream processing, and libraries of machine learning and graph functions. Finally, Spark is fully open source. In fact, one of the most interesting things that, that have happened to it is it's very quickly become, since it was open sourced in 2010, it's become one of the most active projects in big data in this very short history. Um, so just to show you, you know, the, the level of activity of it, here's a graph of the number of contributors to some of the most popular open source processing engines in the past year. And you can see in the past year, Spark has actually overtaken Hadoop MapReduce and every other engine that we're aware of in terms of number of people contributing to it. Uh, it's an interesting thing. It's, you know, there hasn't been as much noise about it uh, commercially, but the actual developer community votes with its feet, and people are actually getting things done uh, and working with the project. So putting these characteristics together, Spark brings the top-end data analysis, the same high-performance, high level of sophistication you get with these expensive systems, to commodity Hadoop clusters. And it runs in the same cluster to let you do more with your data. So I'm going to show these things and show how speed and sophistication come into play uh, through four example use cases from users of Spark. 
First example is Yahoo's personalization team. Um, so Yahoo is, of course, a very large web property, and Yahoo has spent an enormous amount of effort on personalization in order to make every one of its properties, every website you go to, highly relevant to the person visiting, to keep them over there, show them interesting things. Now, when you do personalization, you need to react fast to what the user is doing and to events happening in the outside world. For example, if you look at the Yahoo homepage, which news items are you going to show? You need to learn something about each news item as it comes in to see what users may like it, and you need to learn something about users as they click around to figure out that they're interested in a topic. And to do this, not only do you need to act fast because the news items you know, quickly become less relevant over time, but you need algorithms that are highly sophisticated. Just to give you a picture of that, here's a graph with, some, uh, with the, the relevance of news stories for a particular user over the course of a day uh, at Yahoo. And each line here is one news story. So you can see each news story, some, some of them when they come in, they're very relevant, then they go down in time. Some of them when they come in, they're not that exciting, but over time, uh, you know, the user becomes maybe more interested in that topic. And this change happens just over the span of a few hours. So in order to really take advantage of this data, that's, that's a available, you need to act fast and update these models throughout the day. So this is what the Yahoo personalization team is doing with Spark. At Spark, they run Yahoo inside Hadoop Yarn, which is you know, the widely deployed computation platform there, so they can use the existing data and clusters. And they've been successful with a number of pilot projects doing this. One example was for the Stream Ads project. Uh, they wrote a machine learning algorithm for that in 120 lines of Scala using Spark. The previous implementation was 15,000 lines of C++, and the new algorithm can still run training on a large 100 million record training set in 30 minutes, which is enough to actually react to these stories and update uh, the home page uh, in, in real time as these events come up. Um, in the course of this, Yahoo has been one of the major contributors to the Spark platform, contributing Yarn support, scalability, and operability. And they're just one, one part of the open source ecosystem. Second uh, use case at Yahoo has been ad analytics. So Yahoo Ads wanted to run interactive business intelligence tools on terabytes of data. And they chose Shark, which is Hive implemented on top of Spark to do this. The advantage of that is Shark uses the standard Hive server API. So any tool that plugs into Hive, like Tableau, automatically works with Shark. And as a result, they were able to achieve this and can actually query their, their ad uh, visit data interactively. And the Yahoo Ads team has been a major contributor to Shark, including uh, features like columnar compression, statistics, and JDBC support. Uh, changing uh, focus a little bit, I want to talk about one real-time application. Uh, Conviva is one of the largest video companies on the internet. They manage over 4 billion video streams per month. This is more than any organization except YouTube. And the way they do it is they dynamically select and optimize sources while your video is playing to maximize its quality, to switch you between servers and deal with conditions that arise in the internet to deliver you your video. So this is a task that's extremely time critical. If you have even one second of buffering time, that reduces viewer engagements, and people will just turn that video off, even if it stutters for just a second. So you need to react before the user's buffer runs out and actually switch to a different, uh, you know, to a different stream. Um, Conviva uses Spark Streaming to achieve this. So using Spark Streaming, they learn network conditions in real time, and then they feed them directly into the video player, say the Flash player on your laptop, to optimize the streams. And this system has been running in production for over six months to manage live video traffic. Finally, I want to talk about a, a more business application, a business intelligence product that's a very neat product from ClearStory Data. And they focus on multi-source fast cycle analysis. So multi-source requires some complexity, sophistication to merge different data sources. Fast cycle means they want to react fast. The business problem here is that there are different data sources, both within a business and also external ones, such as social media or just public data feeds, that you'd like to merge together and join together in order to produce insights. And with ClearStory, uh, the, the platform, this can be done in seconds to minutes. Uh, so using Spark, ClearStory has built this highly interactive visual application that lets business users merge these data sources and actually achieve real results from the data and update it in real time. 
And that's been a quick tour of things you can do with Spark. If you want to get started, there are a lot of resources on the Apache Spark homepage. You can download it from there, find a variety of tutorials. And we've put together many free tutorials, including the most recent one from Spark Summit 2013, which includes hands-on exercises. Finally, we've started the company Databricks to bring Spark to the widest possible audience. And our first offering here is a, a partnership with Cloudera uh, to provide Spark and CDH. So to conclude, uh, big data will be standard. Everyone will have big data. What will matter is what you can do with it in terms of speed and sophistication. And Apache Spark bring these to commodity Hadoop clusters to commoditize this aspect of data processing as well.